So my name is Steve Bayshore and I'm the Director of Historic Trades at Mount Vernon and I am in charge of the operation of the distillery, which we're standing in front of, and also the grist mill next door. And I've been here for 13 years, so I came on board at Mount Vernon in, in January 2007, just as they were finishing the reconstruction of the distillery. On this farm, and keep in mind Washington had five farms here at Mount Vernon, so the total property at its peak was 8,000 acres. And we're standing on a remnant of one of those farms. And he first built the grist mill here in 1770, opened in 71. So it came long before the distillery came along. But at that time, he was leaving tobacco behind as his cash crop and went into grains, exporting flour to various markets. A lot of merchant mills in America exported flour. So it's really fast forward toward the end of his life, 1797, the distilling comes on in a big way. And again, the key person there is James Anderson. I think if he had not hired the Scottish immigrant James Anderson, distillery would have never probably been here because he had the expert along with James Anderson's son, John, who ran this daily. So uh, the Scottish connection in early America is big. Uh, all through this region and certainly here at Mount Vernon. This operation has grown over the time that I've been here. We, we did small runs in the beginning, but we've got, become pretty productive and it's, it's very meaningful to me just to tell the story of Washington's distillery and the men that worked here and how much they produced in the late 1790s, which is a pretty amazing amount of gallons. Um, and it's also important to note that six of the workers oh, yeah. in here were enslaved workers, yeah. young men who uh, didn't get paid for the work, but they were a part of making 11,000 gallons of whiskey in 1799. Uh, it also the Scottish influence is big here at Mount Vernon since James Anderson was the Scottish farm manager Washington hired in 1797 whose the idea for the distillery was his and so Washington agreed and they reconstructed this uh, but over the years it's important in another way in that the collaborations that go on here as we've had this uh, weekend with our first whiskey festival event but also all these distillers working with us today some have been in here before and made whiskey with us or brandy so it's a bit of a reunion frankly uh, people like Ted Huber, of course Lisa Wicker, John Campbell, Becky Harris, Thomas McKenzie and others. It's been quite an experience to work with them again and, and they love being here. So I think there's the historical importance but also the, the present day camaraderie that makes this special. Well, my name is Ted Huber and uh, I'm president and head distiller for Starlight Distillery in Starlight, Indiana. I've been involved up here in the Mountain Vernon Project back when they started the Peach Project, I think in 2010 with Steve Bayshore. Uh, gave me the uh, kind of gave me a nod through Discus with Dr. Uh, Cressy of Discus to try to redo Martha Washington's peach brandy project here at Mount Vernon. So a team of us got together and came up here and tried to duplicate that particular process and make that peach brandy. Bringing this historic value back to the industry is a great thing that when people visit Mount Vernon they see with the agriculture side of George Washington was and also the distillation side. Touring the grist mill and touring this uh, still house here is amazing how it was redone and even operating like we're operating today making the ride whiskey. Uh, people really can get a sense of how things were made and the labor and everything it took back then to do a particular project like this. Well my name is Dean Melissa and I am the official portrayer of George Washington here at Mount Vernon and uh, elsewhere around the country. So I'm kind of uh, half actor and half scholar and um, I am George Washington when I'm otherwise dressed. Well, it's important uh, from a number of perspectives from uh, in terms of George Washington. Uh, first of all, it was one of the very final uh, businesses that Washington went into when he returned from the presidency. And, uh, you know, at that point he's fairly set in his ways, but his farm manager, who was a gentleman from Scotland, James Anderson, he convinces Washington um, to get into the whiskey business and tells him that he will sell every drop that he distills. And, of course, that gets Washington's attention. Um, Washington has always been a man of considerable wealth, but most of his wealth was land wealth and not cash wealth. And, the whiskey business was, a, in a practical sense, a way to create cash. Um, but it's also important because the story of whiskey is intrinsically connected in the history of this country. Uh, and uh, you don't have to go too far back in Washington's life backwards. Uh, in 1794, with the, the whiskey insurrection, some of you may think of it as the Whiskey Rebellion. Washington would refer to it as an insurrection. It was the first challenge to the new federal government. Um, 
And so this intrinsic connection is an important story and it needs to be told. Uh, and not just that rebellion, but how whiskey was a critical commodity in commerce from the very beginning and from the very founding of this country. Um, Washington, probably his favorite would have been in the wine family, but uh, he certainly enjoyed a whiskey from time to time for medicinal purposes. <laughs> okay, my name is John Campbell and I am the master distiller at Lafroy Distillery on Isla in Scotland. Directly with George Washington Distillery, I've been involved since 2012. Uh, I was one of the lucky enough to be one of the three Scottish distillers that came over here, uh, and we made some single malt at the George Washington Distillery to mark 100 years of the Scotch Whiskey Association. So, uh, been involved in then. This is fourth time I've been back and uh, making whiskey again today. So amazing. This place is important to me because it's shown me. An art and a craft that is probably lost in Scotland, to be fair. Uh, we have moved on so far away from this, and this is this is our heritage, it's your heritage, it's everyone's heritage. This is how whiskey would have been made two, three hundred years ago. So uh, that's important to me to, to see that and to, to feel that and to feel the creativity in making that. Uh, to, to the industry, it's just, well, this is legacy. This is the legacy of everyone, and uh, I suppose it's just similar to what I'm feeling. But it's more just this is it. This is the industry's heritage as well. All right. When when do you think you'll be back? When do I think I'll be back? Hopefully next year. Uh, definitely, as I come back more often, uh, the bond grows stronger, and you want to be back more often. And it's just, it's just. It's just amazing, it's just amazing. It's like, it's starting to feel like family now. I'm Lisa Wicker, I'm the president and head distiller for Widow Jane Distillery in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've been with this project, with the George Washington Distillery, for almost four years. It'll be four years in the spring. Um, this place uh, has my heart and soul. It uh, gets you back to the basics, it's all the basic elements and everything that I love about distilling and um, the people here are remarkable and the dedication is remarkable and uh, I'm blessed and lucky to be here. Bill Thomas, Jack Rose Dining Saloon, Washington, D.C. Uh, just generally came to this project late in the game. Uh, just been helping out for the last few years. Uh, you know, doing some charity work. Uh, obviously, we carry the brands. Probably one of the only places that carries George Washington and, and awareness. And uh, One of the big things I think we do is... Uh, I supporting this place simply because Kentucky can't be the only place that uh, is known for whiskey and so my way just trying to help out and uh, uh, make it aware that there was distilling uh, in this region and uh, obviously Virginia Maryland you know Pennsylvania the Northeast and rye so you know a passion for rye so this place being fundamentally one of the first places to to distill and the actual name of Jack Rose comes from uh, this distillery the reason that I named Jack Rose, Jack Rose, it's named after uh, a classic cocktail, which serves apple brandy or, or apple jack, uh, and George Washington distilled it here. And when I was looking for a historical tie-in for the bar, it was all about George Washington and Mount Vernon and the fact that he did apple brandy. So the Jack Rose cocktail uh, and the Jack Rose name is actually founded here from Mount Vernon. My name's Dave Shurick, and I started my career with Seagram's in 1969, and my claim to fame is I started with the Reserve, and now I'm a master distiller for Boondocks. As long as it was the Reserve, uh, this project began in earnest, and they needed some mash, so I took some with the Reserve mash, put it in a barrel, and shipped it here. Uh, now I'm here, it's the first time I've ever been to uh, George Washington's estate and uh, it's told me a lot of things that I didn't know. But the only thing I knew about George Washington is how great a man he was. He, he, he was a general in the Army and first president of the United States and, and some other peripheral information. 
but I had no idea how connected he was to this area and to Mother Nature, and he was actually a distiller. So I'm happy to be here. I'm Becky Harris from Catoctin Creek Distilling Company. I'm the president and chief distiller. Um, I came here first. The first time that I came here to Mount Vernon, I think was probably, I'm going to estimate it was about 2012. So it's been a number of years. The first time I came was working with um, Dave Pickerel um, here on, I believe we did the, it was either the peach or the apple brandy project, the first years that we were doing it. It was so much fun. Dave is of course, was of course the master of all storytellers and the connection that you feel to all those coming when you come here and work the connection you feel to the history of this industry the history of the project of the people that are involved is just it's 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 something you can really put your hands on literally and sink your teeth into from a connection to what came before us to what we hope to become as we, my husband and I grew our business, where we got connected really to that stream of what is whiskey, what is American spirits. And that's always been the most exciting thing and why I still get myself out of bed and drive here an hour on a Sunday morning in order to come and be a part of it one more time. And really when we were starting our, our company, one of the the, the linchpins of it was ta starting to make a conversation again about Virginia rye, that Virginia was really a home of rye. And you know, there was a, a, there are a lot of people who talk about Maryland rye, they talk about Pennsylvania rye, but Virginia rye has just a story to history. And we really wanted to kind of take that and start to tell that story on a national scale again. International, actually. I'm Thomas Earl McKenzie. Uh, See, I think we started, started coming up here in 2014, something like that. I just come and enjoy, I've always enjoyed it. I've been in all parts of the distilleries and had distilleries. And it's different to get away and come over and run this stuff. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a vacation, but a working vacation. <laughs> uh, and uh, I hadn't been up in about four years, I reckon. But uh, I think we're gonna get more, come up, come up here a little bit more you know, working on place uh, right now and working on some place. But I mainly consult, keep two, three good customers, and uh, based out of Tennessee. Okay. And really from Alabama. But uh, my family's been in the whiskey business, skips generation going back to old Scotland. But I know three four hundred years. So. You can't get it out of your blood, you know. <laughs> Track is good to keep it going, you know. So much of the old ways been lost, you know. And it's try to keep it going here, you know. So uh, that's what's been important to me, you know. Just come down here and be part of it. Plus, you got to be a little crazy, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've always thought stuff like this, you know, to keep the old, old times going. And mm -hmm. if, if, if everything goes to pot, Somebody still got to be able to make a living, you know. Please, everybody, and something to drink. My name is Simon Brooking. I'm the Beam Suntory Scotch Ambassador. World Peace through whiskey, one dram at a time. That's my job. And I represent Lothroig, Beaumore, Auchentoshan, Glengarry, and Ardmore single malts for Beam Suntory. Uh, this is uh, my first experience with making whiskey at the George Washington Distillery. Uh, but I have um, spent uh, a number of visits here. Uh, we've actually done a Burns Night Supper um, uh, here at the Mount Vernon Inn, as well as a tasting here uh, at the Stillhouse. For me, this is about connecting people back to the history of, of whiskey. Um, when I talk about whiskey, I'm talking usually about single malt scotch. Um, but uh, when I found out that the uh, distiller here for George Washington was a Scotsman, uh, there was an instant connection. Um, and uh, there is nowhere else in America like this site uh, for its history, uh, for giving people perspective on uh, the history.
historical aspect of whiskey making. Uh, we, um, at Lafroig uh, on Isla, we are one of six distilleries that still does floor malting, the traditional ways that uh, whiskey uh, was malted and produced. And we are one of the few distilleries uh, in Scotland where you can come and see the way whiskey was made 200 years ago. So um, I instantly connected with this experience here at Mount Vernon. Uh, it's important to understand the traditions. Uh, people think for us at Lafroig that we're a factory because they see bottles of our whiskey all over the world. And then I tell them that total staff at Lafroig is 18 people. And they're surprised by that. Um, it is handcrafted, it is artisanal spirit. Just because we're owned by one of the major spirits conglomerations um, doesn't mean, the, mean that we uh, don't make, uh, we have attention to detail and it is handcrafted and artisanal. Um, so it's for me it's about bringing the whiskey making experience to the table when you're enjoying the whiskey um, and you cannot get any more in the weeds, in the bogs, in the peat, uh, than being here at Mount Vernon uh, on the Bucket Brigade um, and then tending the fires the way our stillmen tend the fires uh, uh, at Lafroy. Uh, my name is Marshall Sheets and I'm a practicing cooper, so that means I make barrels, uh, buckets, wash tubs, butter churns. So essentially round wooden containers, vessels. Um, so a uh, pretty important uh, job here at Mount Vernon. Uh, as George Washington was exporting most of his uh, commodities, goods, uh, in casks and barrels. So uh, he had a number of uh, coopers working for him, both free men and slaves, who were producing flour barrels, uh, later on whiskey casks, uh, fish casks, wash tubs, and uh, buckets for use up at the mansion house and at the different farms. So, uh, I mean, this is uh, home of George Washington, and, and while it doesn't necessarily encompass Mount Vernon, um, the states doesn't encompass the original five farms that were here, um, but Mount Vernon as a, as a whole and as a historical um, figure for the United States is, I mean, uncompromised. I mean, there's, uh, this is kind of where it all began in a sense. And uh, for coopery, uh, colonial America was, was dependent on coopers and barrels for exporting and shipping products both into the colonies in the young United States and then exporting products and commodities out of the colonies as well. So, so Coopers were a really important role. Uh, Mount Vernon and uh, George Washington's uh, home, of course, is important, I think, to, um, to um, America as, as kind of an institution and a country is you know, the, one of the primary founding uh, fathers of the country. But um, there's more to it than just a president and a general. There's uh, his home life and uh, the business of Mount Vernon, I think, is also extremely important. It's, I think it's really important for people to learn about that. My name's Sam Murphy. I'm the manager of historic trades here at George Washington's Mount Vernon. I actually started at Mount Vernon as a volunteer in 2010. Saw an ad for a part-time historic interpreter in the trades department. Thought that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, so joined here in March of 2011. Uh, I have been part of the whiskey distilling crowd, the group that makes the whiskey here since then. Uh, Mount Vernon is in and of itself an incredibly special place. We're celebrating George Washington, uh, really not only a founding father, but an entrepreneur. And what we do here at Mount Vernon is share with the over a million visitors Washington's approach to business, uh, his diverse business models, and especially our distillery. Uh, it's an aspect of Washington's life and business that most people don't know anything about. So we are doing what Washington's uh, distillers did back in the 18th century. We're making Washington's whiskey. My name is Justin Cherry, and I am the traditional baker of Half Crown Bakehouse. And I first uh, got involved with Mount Vernon um, as a fellow, as a library fellow. I was studying historical foodways of George Washington's Mount Vernon. 
and I took that knowledge and put it into research and into play with my oven traveling around the country to historic sites and kind of spreading the knowledge of historical foodways. And I think that this is very important to pass along, especially when people are connected through food. And it is very meaningful to me to spread that knowledge and for people to be aware of what our past looked like and more importantly, what it tasted like. I got involved actually with the distillery through my fellowship and I started to find old grains that were involved in the distilling and that made it a little bit more purposeful for me because as moving forward the distillery uh, will try to use more heirloom grains from that time period so the whiskey would taste almost identical to what it tasted like in the 18th century.